Welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about technology, diversity, globalism, and creativity every day. <laughs> I'm your host of Center Stage. My name is Donna Blanchard. I'm the managing director of Kumukuhoi Theater. And we're coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumukuhoi Theater. If you would ever like to join us in the downtown audience, uh, you may do so. Just email jay at thinktechhawaii.com. And also, if you would like to join us virtually, you may tweet questions and comments into the show um, at ThinkTechHI. That's us, and we will see your questions and comments on the screen. I'd like to introduce you to um, an actor and a director here in um, Hawaii, in Anawahu. His name is Will Ha'au, and he is going to be appearing in, uh, he's appeared in many shows at Kumakuhoi Theater, most recently Pelicans by Eric Yokomori. Welcome, Will. Thank you. It's very nice to have you here. Great. Uh, uh, it's a little, little different forum of expression for you. Right, right. <laughs> the green. <laughs> the green, <laughs> but it looks like blue. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so let's talk about, I know you have been involved in the world of theater uh, um, all over the country for right. decades. So uh, I'd, I'd like I'm to get I'm a dinosaur. In yeah. <laughs> well, you've been at it for a long time. Yeah, over 30 years. Over yeah, 40 years, that's yeah. pretty cool. Mostly in New York, yeah. So after, after high school, I spent a year in college, and somebody came to Hawaii and had an audition, and I got cast. Then I stayed in New York for 30, over 30 years. Who was that? Who had an audition? Uh, Jean Erdman, the, the wife of uh, Joseph Campbell, the mythologist. Oh. Yeah, and so she had her own. She was a, she started off her career as a soloist for Martha Graham's first dance company, and uh, she branched out to form her own theater company in New York City. And so um, her shows are basically based on myth and how to use uh, music, literature, and movement to create a story. Not a musical per se. It's called total theater, and uh, she's her career has spanned. I mean. Decades and decades. She's she just turned 100 oh. last month. And um, there's going to be a retrospect of her career over at the Hawaii State Library, which I'm going to uh, put together with some people from the Joseph Campbell Foundation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so she was from Hawaii, is that why Born she and raised. She's, yeah, she uh, she's a Dillingham, here. just from the Dillingham family. Oh. Yeah, okay. so she went to school in Sarah Lawrence, um, and, uh, and Martha Graham was a guest artist and picked her up as a soloist. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, I mean, Jean knows how to do the hula and stuff. You know, she, she's just a great lady. Okay, so that makes sense, what the myth and Hawaii come together. Uh -huh. But what about you? Where were you in your life that you said, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to that audition? Were you, I was how old at, were you? I was uh, right out of high school. I went to Chaminade. I left Chaminade because I was living on my own, so I had to work, so they gave me, I was never in school, so they gave me an exit interview. <laughs> nice. Oh. And then so I ended up at Leeward, and then she was having auditions at Leeward College. Were you studying theater? Yeah, yeah. I took a theater course from David Johnson. David Johnson, and just so happened then, I was, I was picked, and next thing I knew, in a week I was in New York. I was a country bumpkin in New York. <laughs> you, you were very young, did you have uh, did you have a background in theater? Did you, yeah, did you go to um, see theater when I you were I think when, um, prior to the, the great Ronnie Bright, Ronnie Bright who taught all the, the, the Castle High School performing arts okay, uh, okay. students, prior to him it was Jim Nakamoto at McKinley. So we, I mean it's a thousand seat art, you know, theater at McKinley High School and um, we did five shows a year. We had a season, like every other theater company, oh, we had wow. a season. And we had um, professional people coming in to train people. We had professional people coming in to um, show us how to design lights, work tech, uh, make costumes, build sets. Yeah, so I had all of that training way before. So when people go to like you know the terminal, the, the stage the terminology, I, I, I mean I already knew that. Yeah. You know, so it was no no big deal. Okay, so you had that kind of background. You had some. And I did yeah, and I did some H T Y shows you know, in high school you know so. Oh, okay. So it wasn't um, I wasn't too shocked. I, I was shocked when I got into the, when I realized I was in a professional world now. Then yeah, because you didn't even have a lot of time to aspire for that. You just were there. Yeah, and then I got my equity card, so I, then I got my agent, and you know, so I was just very lucky. Huh? You, you must have been talented, too. But, yeah, somewhat, You got chosen somewhat, to do that. Somewhat, yeah. Uh, so, so from there, whenever the, whenever the Theater of the Open Eye, was called Theater of the Open Eye in New York City on 88th Street, 
East Side. And whenever the season would be over, I, then I'd go and audition for other shows. So sometimes they took me on the road to a different state and, um, you know, Canada, Greece, and you know, wherever. So. Oh, wow. And I worked with the Mirror Repertory Theater Company with the great Joe Ding Page and Anthony Hopkins. Really? Yeah. Wait a minute. Well, okay, Anthony Hopkins never been on stage because he kept doing movies. I and mean, we used to get so yeah. pissed and be like, come on, bro, you gotta do a show. He took the movie. You called Anthony Hopkins, bro. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I bet you were. In the elevator. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna back up and we're gonna break this down a little bit okay. to, to get into that story. So you're 18 or 19. Yeah, yeah. You you land in New York now. How are you getting? You know, are there other people from the company that you're staying with? How are you learning your way around? Because um, that's a big difference okay. between Hawaii and okay, New York. Okay, the show was called Gogan in Tahiti, and so she I wasn't the only one from Hawaii that she cast. She cast uh, Renee Ane, Amador, and I forget the uh, I forget the other woman's name, and and Kathy Paula from the the great Paula family here. She, um, she's with uh, Wilka Haley over at Aulani. Oh, okay. She plays oh. one of the storytellers there, too. But she had a career in Waikiki back in the day when everybody had their own showroom. And her father was the great pianist, Renee Paolo, oh. who's been around forever, oh, okay. you know? Um, so she was cast as um, Gauguin's Tahitian lover, and I was um, a friend. The cast is the friend of her. And, with, and so when the show closed, it lasted, I think, maybe like, I don't know, five months. It ran for like, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty long time for yeah. something that's off-Broadway. And then, um, then I stayed, and then um, auditioned for other shows and whatnot. And then Jean kept using me to, you know, be in other shows. So she kept using you, and you you just learned from other actors how to. Yeah, being around. Read the what was the tabloid that you read for auditions back then? And uh, I read part of the script. It was a code reading. Oh, oh, but to f to find auditions to go to. Oh, see, well, you know, in New York City, they have. Um, uh, two newspapers. One is called Show Business, and one is called Backstage. And so everything oh, okay. is auditions, auditions, is is unending. And that's how you know where to go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. But so there's all the, you know. There's union auditions, non-union auditions. There's educational auditions. You know, all different types of work for uh, a member of Actors Equity. You know, yeah. the union. They really take care of you. Okay. The good. Union. All right. Yeah. So this is part of how you got yeah. along as a very young man finding a. Yeah, and, 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 and the company and, 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 and the company was made up of people who live in New York, so so they, they took care of us, you know. So when the show okay. closed, everybody went back home who was from Hawaii, and I stayed, you know. And, and so people took care. Of, they, they, you know, they were very nice. They, they yeah. took care. Yeah, and your family was supportive of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's surprising because there's so many people from Hawaii in New York City. In well, it's an island. That's true, Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but but a lot of them are in, in the in the in the profession, yeah. whether it's uh, in administration or um, on you know on stage performing or writing. I mean, like Susan Stanton, she's she's a writer in New York City. Yeah. Um, the guy who was the general manager of Carnegie Hall is from Hawaii. Oh so, yeah. So a lot of them, you you get a lot of like musicians, like orchestras from high schools and whatnot. They go to Carnegie Hall because he's the connection there. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, good to know we have. Yes, yeah. and whenever there. somebody new from Hawaii would come into town, the core group of Hawaii people would have a party to welcome the new person, person in. So, oh, nice. yeah, it was really nice. Really so nice. you brought the aloha. Yeah, and then every every year there's a, a May Day in the park. May Day is Lay Day, potluck. All the Hawaiians come with their friends, but it's. It's not in June because of the weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> they, and so, you know, so I think everybody, after you close the show, you just go on to the next one, you know? Sometimes you won't see a friend in, for years because you're constantly doing shows, you know, yeah. moving around. So you ended up, you, were, you had your home base then in New York, and yeah, you Manhattan, had right. gone to auditions um, yeah. that took you around the world. Yeah, yeah. All over the place. For how many years, how long did you live away from Hawaii? At least thirty. Oh. Yeah, I would I, I would come back maybe once or once a year or something like that. Yeah. And whenever I would come back, Karen Yamamoto Hackley would take me to Kumu Kahua Theater. Oh, nice. Which I never. There ever, we go, ladies and gentlemen. We just came full circle yeah, already in I, the first segment. Yeah. <laughs> I I I've never been to a Kumu Kahua show when I was growing up. Oh yeah. Yeah, but but I did see. Um, I think what made me get into theater was. Um, uh, was watching um, Twelfth Night or whatever by Jimmy James Grant Benton, his pigeon version of Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, it was just an incredible show. And some of those people in that show, including Jimmy, was the catalyst for Kumukuhua Theater. Didn't it start off as a class project with Dennis Carroll? It started, yeah, I don't know if it was so much a class project. It was, it was a, a group of grad students right, who said, right. yeah, we should have something and like this And they were all in Kumukuhua yeah. Theater. So it just, and Jimmy, when I was in high school, Jimmy would come back to McKinley to help Jim Nakamoto teach us. So he was, he was somebody I looked up to. Oh, yeah. So whenever somebody asked me to direct his show, I there's no problem doing it. There you we, go. We did it over at Mission House Museum. I saw it. Yeah. As and a um, I think they're doing it on Kauai. Ed Kahea, who was in Booga Booga, the surviving member, has a theater company that he's forming. And I think that's one of the shows that they're going to be doing. He asked me to direct it, but it may be conflicting. But we'll see. We'll see. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, but there were, just to say this, but they were all part of that Kumakuhua group. There was, it must have been a very, it must have been a, a really incredible group of talented, <sighs> well-matched people. Incredible. Yeah, that say we're going to form a theater, and 45 years later, it's still, it's still going. thriving. Right, and some of the people who were, when I was in high school, they were grad students, right? and some of them now are the professors over at mm. the theater department at Kennedy Theater. You know, I mean, uh, University of Hawaii. So, oh yeah, uh, Elizabeth Wickman, yeah, and uh, David Johnson, who was at Leeward, Paul Gravatt, but they've all left to teach at other universities. So, yeah. but uh, it was a, uh, it was a great time to be young and to see these like, incredible people, you know. Yeah, so yeah, you had a really nice dose of um, just knowledge of the theater around yeah. you. Did you ever, do you have any, do you have other acting, people with the acting bug in your family? Do you come by it genetically as well? No. Not no, at all? No, So yeah. what happened was in high school, my best friend, Benjamin Lum, um, was, he wanted to audition for this show called Peter Pan. And I, I just went along with them, right? But they needed guys, so I just put my name on the list. And next thing you know, they just got up on, we just got up on stage and had us move around, and I got cast as a crocodile. <laughs> that was the start TikTok. of my career. Yeah, That's TikTok. That's a big, yeah. important role there. Yeah, and I, I did it only because of the fact that I think when, when I was growing up, I think I know when I was growing up, I had a, a really bad stammer. Oh, yeah. So I went to the uh, English department, speech department, to take a class, but it was all filled. It was filled, so. I ended up in drama, and that summer I never stammered. And ever that got again. rid of it. Yeah. You know, so, I credit theater with a lot of my reading ability because you audition with a cold read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I can plow through yeah. just about anything. So you know, over the years, <laughs> I've come to believe that you know, theater, the arts, is medicine. Yeah. It's really healing. You know, it's medicine. I agree. It's healing. It's educational. Yeah. It's uh, bonding. It's it's a community. Yeah. Um, forms a community collective like no other. Yeah, without artists there is no community because we mirror what's happening in the world. Right. If nobody's there yeah. to show you it, you, people, it just slips by. You know, so. Ooh, hold that thought. We've got to take our first break. Okay. Let's come back and okay. talk some more about that. Okay, look at that. It's our first break already. Please stick around. We'll have more of Center Stage in just a moment. Hi, my name is Seymour Kazimersky. I have a show called Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. Our show is about opening minds and facilitating conversations. To tell you the truth, I have no idea what we're going to be talking about. I have no idea who our guests are going to be, but I guarantee you we're going to have lots and lots of fun. Aloha from Seymour's World. Aloha, I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii's leading digital media platform for civic engagement, raising public awareness on tech, energy, diversification, and globalism. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. Hi, welcome back. This is Center Stage on the ThinkTech Hawaii Digital Network. I am Donna Blanchard, your host of Center Stage, and we're talking with actor and director Will Howe. Oh. Um, now, that's an interesting thing that you said, that without the mirror of actors, uh, our, our, our humanity, our history, our, who we are and how we show See, up. See, I think the, 
The purpose for me as an artist is to, the great responsibility of an artist is to show what's happening in society. The good, the bad, so we know what's going on. We can fix things, you know, mm. we, 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 we check our morality and stuff like, you know, so it's, it's, it's a heavy responsibility for artists. I think people think of actors um, in movies like Hollywood or whatnot, but that's not what an artist is all about. Right. You know? Yeah. It's At least not the Hollywood actors. Like, a, like a, a doctor, a serious doctor is there to save people, to heal people. Same with the artist. Artist is there to heal people. Uh, I've never thought about it that way, and I'll tell you, I'm uh, not that I'm objecting to this in any way, but oh, let, me, let me tell you, my feeling as, as, a, as an actor and a director has always been, I am here to tell the story. I have a right. responsibility to tell this story in the purest, most human way, mm -hmm. and that means you don't react unless you are reacting to yeah. something, yeah. and you react with honesty, and you, I remember directing a show one time, and there's a woman's in a hotel and she calls for um, the bellhop to come up and then two seconds later my guy playing the bellhop knocks on the door and I said what were you waiting outside her door no then it's gonna take a little while and he said well then what's she gonna do while I'm taking I said leave it up to her Heather what are you gonna do so she had to move around the room and wait for the guy to get there that's honesty right, right that's right. what I love about the theater um, and um, I think that that is maybe we're not so different. But I think when you watch that as an audience and you see those honest moments, you see what someone does in a hotel room. And this is a, this is a oh, comedy. Yeah, yeah. This was communicating doors, the Alan Ak Ackborn communicating uh -huh. doors. Uh -huh. You know, it's an uproarious comedy, right, but right. when you see those honest moments within it, you recognize yourself there and it transports you into that world. Honest moments in life. Yeah, but you, uh, for me, you kind of escape real life. Right. And then right. the conversation that you bring right. out of it, I never thought of it in terms of actually, yes, it, we're relaying the human experience, right. and it, that does change you know, throughout the even millennia. Even if it gives somebody, even if the person is so total opposite of what, you, what, what you're sharing, if they pause to think for a second, just for a second, something It'll come back to that person, right? You know, so their their objectivity may change. You know, okay. It just allows them to feel differently. The heart, the the compassion gets wider. You know, so. Okay, I love that. Oh, I love that. Okay, you got me. Yeah. I'm so that's why I love doing theater. I mean, I, I mean, and it's it's a joy to share some good goodness around the world. It's a joy. Yeah. How can it not be? You know. Well, there's so, especially when you're playing someone awful or, or oh, yeah, you know, yeah, horribly yeah, yeah. just yeah. wrecked. Yeah. That is so, it's cathartic and it's moving as an actor, mm -hmm. but also when you know the audience is with you. Right. And yeah. you're, you're really telling that story and they're experiencing it. They're learning. They are learning. Right. And it. the great thing about Kumukuhua Theater, my experience so far at Kumukuhua is, has been just joy. We're, we're telling this incredible stories about Hawaii and its people. And there are things I didn't even know historically oh you know, yeah and, and oh it's just been such a great a great journey to come back home and lock into this theater yeah I think so too I yeah. and I not just because I'm the managing director but I think that the when you get to brand work with of theater Harry Wong and um, Tori Kinoshita and I had a good time recently with John Watt you know and yeah. and I think all three of them are I think, well, two of them are, are educators. They're great educators. And I think without Harry even knowing, he is a great educator because he's taking all these new people, this wave of new um, people coming into the theater. And he's, you know, they're learning from him without them even knowing. I mean, you know, he's, right. you know, and they're so, they think outside the box. You know, they're not your typical, you know. I mean, I've seen other theaters in town, their shows, but what makes Kumu special is they do brand new shows. I mean, they they f they, they they foster um, playwrights, directors, actors, and you know the only way to get your feet wet is you got to jump in the ocean. So, Kumu's taken a lot of chances, and but but the great thing is that I think Harry's always there to like make sure that they have a safe net. You know. Yeah, we make sure that things are always they're always moving in the general right direction. Right. Yeah. Right. We, we have we have a lot of artistic freedom that right. we offer and insist on really, really but yeah. yeah if we're not always bringing new people into the fold then we're not sustainable right right we, right, we right. have to continually do that but I think that that 
that type of theater, when I go on vacation, I like to go to the place where, you know, the locals hang out. Right. Because that's right. how you really get to know a town. If you really want to get to know a town, that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And you can come to a place like Kumu, you know. Right. I, I would love it if every city had a theater like ours. I would go visit on vacation right. and say, well, let's go see one of their stories, whether it's uh, you know, we're doing a, an Eric Yokomori piece right now that really could take place anywhere right. in the country. Right. Right. Um, but it's being told, it's being told by us in our home with our people, and therefore right. it becomes very unique. Right. And it's written by one of our own. Right. And the great thing also too is that the, you have all different types of writers, different types of directors, yeah. and whatnot. So everybody's, you know, it's uh, embracing. You know, it's not exclusive. It's oh inclusive. no! Yeah, no, no, not at all. We can't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we're not alive. So yeah. let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, Pelicans. Pelicans. Um, this is. Uh, I think Eric Yokomori is. Uh, he he is, most certainly the the most prolific, um, absurdist playwright in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last year we did his Cockadoodle Doo, right, it's an right, right. um, absurdist surrealist right. uh, tale yeah. that could have taken place in Indiana, where Indiana, I come from. Yeah. <laughs> By yep, the way, yep, the yep. accent was pretty close. Um, uh, and this play is disaffected youths trying to live yeah, by I mean, an old fashioned an code. An old code, and it's, um, you know, when you just don't take care of your group of people and you keep them isolated, they're lost in society. And so, uh, I think violence. I think back then, uh, back in the old days, you know, revenge killing was you know was a hero because he did the revenge killing. But right. it's illegal in this day and age. It's illegal. It's immoral. You know. But that's what happens when you get disenfranchised. You get lost. You know. Yeah. And do you think? Uh, do you think that we would revert back to that were it not for? Laws. If for some reason our government and our judicial system crumbled, would we revert back? Do you think? Well, you know, it's a strong possibility. Sure, there could be, you know, mayhem. I mean, look what now. Now we have laws, but still people are breaking them. You know, just look at the current political, you know, um, happening right now. You know, yeah. people are, you know, protesting and whatnot, and they're punching each other out and what, you know. But there's laws that can get arrested. But you know. There's a depends who is in charge, you know. We may know. just not have laws oh, anymore. Man. We've you know? got to do a lot more theater then. If <laughs> but see, that's why artists have to show that, like the, uh, like the media has to show the world what's going on. They're artists too. I mean, you know, different yeah. types of artists, but we all need to collectively do our job so the, the, you know, the society that we live in doesn't crumble. We yeah. have to move forward, you know. Um, spiritually and oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sound. <laughs> um, spiritually, emotion. You know, I mean, you know, just compassionate. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know, just um, you know, it's not easy. We just take it one step at a time. <laughs> I would but hope that we wouldn't crumble back into. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, well, these three characters. The yeah, these three but characters. They fall into. I mean. They fall into despair. I mean, you know, they commit yeah. the violent act of murder and. Their lives are gone. And they don't know. Well, then they don't really have a purpose. Not in life. They don't yeah. have purposes. Yeah. So, and it's interesting how he wrote, he didn't write it like, you know, it took us, you know, the great Tori, you know, she's the director that we have, has to sit down. She had to explain this, her vision with us. And it's because reading the script, you just didn't know where to go. Because he writes in such a, you know, ways that I don't even. You could. This show could be a drama. It, the show could be a straight-up comedy. Right. You know. You, I, I'm glad that Tori's involved and back when the season was originally chosen. And I asked Harry, okay, uh, Harry. I always say, okay, who's directing this one? Okay, who's directing this one? And when he attached Tori to that show, I said, okay, that'll. She's a really good person to bring yeah. out the story yeah. to. I think it's full. Of and stuff. the great thing about Tori is that she she lets you create. You know, she'll give you a certain. Um, a word or something, you know, a, and she just lets you go, and then she'll she'll bring you back in and whatnot, and and it's great. But she has uh, this. The great thing about this year, working for three shows in a row for Kuma, I take a break after this one, <laughs> but that it's all been some wonderful people. Yeah. That at every cast, there's always new people that have never been to the theater before, that worked in the theater before, and watching them experience a Kuma Kuhu experience has been really wonderful. Oh yeah, because it is it is so different. Yeah, and it's, it's, 
it's just so it, because it's the, it's so personal the space and the audience, you know, and I can see them, just the whole process. And and Tori just Tori loves her actors, and so there's uh, some people who have never been to the Kumu stage and what what nineteen year old boy and Gabe first time, and I could see him being nervous, and now I see him, the transformation is just wonderful. He's just because I think everybody just sort of embraced everybody, so he's yeah. like. He's just confident now. You know, ah, he's just oh, nice. He's great, great, great. I, I wish more people could actually witness. I mean, not just at Kumu, but the, witness the process at theaters, yeah. where when you're working with a director who has that sort of confidence in their script and her actors to, right, to right. let them really, really play. And I haven't worked with her as a director. I'm. Uh, I hope to someday soon, but I. Um, you know, you also have to have rules and boundaries, yeah. or there is no yeah. safety. You have to know that your director is going to be there to say, no, that didn't work. Yeah. So yeah. here, let's do this. Yeah, she's, um, I've tried some things, and she goes, oh, no. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, fine, fine, good, good, good. Yeah, but you feel the freedom to try. Yeah, and we do something else, and then, you know, we'll, we'll make it work, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, but, you know, but you still have directors these days who are, like, either they're, like, the, you know, Here's Dictators. This is we're going to move around the chessboard. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, oh boy, so bad. But uh, but I've never witnessed that at Kumu, so. Yeah, I haven't either. I have but in New York City, I've witnessed, you know, all kinds. <laughs> I bet. What was the catalyst to bring you back to Hawaii? Well, Karen Yamamoto Hackler was going to start her own professional theater company. Oh, I remember her talking about and that. And so I came back and we did a whole year. We got paid professionally, like every week, full medical coverage. She had a board member, everything. We traveled we traveled all the islands and performed. It was take it was to take theater to places where there was no theater. We performed at a Buddhist temple, we performed at a Lo'i. We had to go down to this valley and we performed at a Lo'i. And I said, who's gonna come to this? They said, watch, the whole town came walking down the hill with with food, oh. with chairs, with torches. Wow. That's theater. That's oh, the yeah. purest That's sense that they just give and then they give back to you with this food or whatever they have, you know. Oh, wow. But oh, it wasn't just, sustainable. She didn't well, Karen, uh, after a year, Karen um, got worried that she got cancer. Yeah. But uh, so I said, just take care of yourself and, you know, and we'll, you know, we'll come back to it whenever you're ready. And it's been, it's been over five years. And so she's mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah. You maybe know. the time is coming back You know, her, she's, she's, she's great there. Yeah. yeah. But she's, she's the one who would always take me to Kumukuhua. When I, from New York, I would come back to visit. She would always take me to Kumukuhua. Oh, nice. And I remember t at least two of the shows that I saw that was I just loved. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, we have to go to our second break already. Okay. Yeah. We're going to be we're gonna be right back. You stay put. We're going to be back with more of Will Ha'awa on Center Stage. Okay. This is Think Tech Hawaii. And it's Wednesday. Every Wednesday is Energy Wednesday here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. 4 to 5 p.m. every Wednesday. Come and listen to us. And just to show you what I mean, I'm going to ask Sharon to tell us more. Come and see us every Wednesday, as Jay said. And we have people like Jim Albers from HECO here and co-host Ray Starling here every Wednesday. We not only go on Olelo and OC16, but also stream live. So please come visit us, hear about the latest in clean energy. Okay, Jim, you've been here. You got any comment on all this? As important as energy is in all of our lives today, this is a great forum and a great format to vet those issues. So I encourage everybody to listen in and participate. Okay, Ray, what do you think for a close? Well, I, I think this is the greatest show uh, in the energy world here in Hawaii. Uh, you can come here every week, one hour, and catch the latest on what's happening and hear from the people who really know what's going on uh, like Jim Alberts, we appreciate your coming today. Thank you. Ray Starling, Sharon Murray Waki, Jim Alberts, and Jay Fidel here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. 4 to 5 p.m. Wednesday. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, we're back. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series. We're talking with Will Ha'au. Oh. Um, what were you just saying? You're working on a couple different. Well, Kamukahu is um, uh, co sponsoring the Play Builders. Oh, it's uh, part of our Dark Knight series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm doing. Um, Monday night and Tuesday night. The new play festival. Yeah, so I'm reading one on Monday and I'm reading another one on Tuesday. Yeah, I think it's really, I'm, I love it that we're working with, we're able to give a space to play builders to do that. That's kind of a really natural alliance. Yeah, you're fostering us. again, you're fostering all these playwrights. And the fact that you guys are having one, one evening just for young 
playwrights. Yeah, that's cool. That's Terry. That's Playbuilders. They put that together. I think that's yeah, awesome. And yeah. we also worked with um, the the new playwright festival uh, a few months ago that was put put together by um, oh, what's her name? I interviewed her. She le she left the island. Oh, I hate it when this happens. We just had another new play festival oh, about okay. six months ago in okay. the theater. And I will think of the name of it probably after, after the we're show. off the air. <laughs> after the show. But, um, you know, so, uh, and, and we, we work with the One Minute Play Festival also. Right, we were in it. Both of I had, you and I had a scene yeah, together. Yeah, we got to be on stage yeah, together. Yeah, that was hilarious. Uh, was that sort of thing when you just have, you got to have a ton of scripts constantly in the hopper. I was just working on a, a grant proposal today, and I, I, you know, looked at my old grant proposal and it said we're always working with playwrights to develop scripts. And it's really, I, I put the word new in there. Right. We, yeah. You have to keep going. It is not enough that you did Lee Cataluna. We love all of your work. Now write something new. Right, <laughs> you right, know? right, right. Now right. what's next? Now what's next? You right, know? yeah. Because you, you gotta, you got to keep going. you got to have something in the hopper. Yeah. Uh, so I look forward to Monday. Well, I look forward to that week when we... When we um, host play builders over at Kumago Yeah, Theater. that's the first week in April. Yeah, so we I'm there. looking forward to hearing the beginnings of a birth, you know, of a play. Yeah, because even yeah. when they're very in that nascent stage where some of them, you know, it doesn't look like they have a lot of potential, they always have potential. Yeah. There's always. Potential. And you know, you have to go through the stage, right? You know, like when you're growing up, you got to go through a stage, you know. So this is the beginning when you get a little feedback from the audience, and then, you know, hopefully it'll inspire them to. You know, to keep right going, yep, yep, it can yep. be exciting. Yep. Um, if you don't mind, you and I have had, uh, have talked a little bit about this before. I'd kind of like to talk about it some more, and that's um, critical analysis of theater because I feel like I feel like in a lot of arenas, especially when you have you know a smaller uh, group. I'm from Northwest Indiana. You mm -hmm. know, we have a group of theaters there that would be reviewed. Um, and it's roughly the same size geographically and population-wise as Oahu. Um, one thing that I notice on Oahu is that we do not have a lot of critical analysis or we don't make a lot of room for, for real critical analysis to say, this didn't work. You know, I feel mm -hmm. like there's a lot of soft pedaling on everything going on. And I feel like, you know, the, the, you, when you have the audience feedback at the play festival, you really need that. You need to know what doesn't work so that you get better the next time. Right. So with Kuma Kahua, we always have a, whatever show is up, you always have one night uh, that's uh, a Q&A night, a question and answer. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's, that sort of thing is critical. I mean, you know, it's helpful, you know. Um, I think because the island is small and I think people don't want to step on anybody's foot or feet, you know, so mm -hmm. you know, so everything is uh, said in the in the back room, yeah. as opposed to just coming out and just sharing it in a nice, nice way. You know what I mean? You know, maybe we should have a a state um, convention over the convention center, the theater, the, all the theaters in the state. You know, collectively. Oh yeah. You know, and bring in some guests that they can gear us. You know. Oh, you know. I have adjudicated somehow. Yeah. Oh, and not adjudicated, but just uh, you know, d different workshops from people from the arena stage, from New York, from Los Angeles, oh, yeah. from another country, you know, so we can break out of this, you know. Oh, I see what you're saying. Little shell, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's something in, like in Northwest Indiana Theater, we could go into Chicago and, and see shows, so we were exposed to so much more. Right. I mean, sound, yeah. my hair was on the microphone. Um, we, and we could go, and there's some hot little theaters in Michigan. We right. could go in and see things that, you have to keep exposing yourself so that you develop those new ideas. Right. But also, and I understand what you're saying, you don't want to step on people's toes. Right, right. But I sometimes feel like people are, af are more afraid here, because we are an island in the middle right. of the Pacific, right. people are more afraid here to speak honestly in any sort of with any sort of negative message right and the you know sometimes the negative message you can couch it really nicely and say here's how you can get better but the fact is i feel we need to be able to say nope that didn't work i know you got that production is open and it's running right. but it's it's Just not working it's for not me working. and here's why and 
I, I've seen, we, we do have this wonderful vehicle hitting the stage, wherein mm -hmm. um, they have their staff reviewers come out and see the shows, and then the general public can submit reviews. Right. And I've seen people maligned on there for giving an honest opinion about a show. Yeah, I've seen that too. Yeah. But uh, also, too, I mean, <clears throat> it depends how you write it as well, too, because when you give medicine, you don't want to just overdose somebody. You, you have to be very careful how you yeah. take it. But at the same time, the patient has to know you're sick. It's not going to help you. Right. <laughs> it's so right. simple you, like you that. Need you know? to. Yeah. So I'm, I'm here to help you, to give you some medicine and show you that how you can get better, you know, how you can heal, and, you know, but, but it's, it's, you know, any small place. See, and that's why I have a hard time because I, I don't see too much theater here because I don't want to jump in the pond because there's too many big fishes in the pond. It's too crowded. Oh. So I just stay in the ocean <laughs> so that way I can keep learning Okay. because it's so vast, Yeah. you know. You know, so, you know, because in New York City, you can go to a theater that's in the si half of this room. Mm. There's all types of theater. Then you go to the Broadway theaters. And, you know, I performed in Greece at the Herod Atticus Theater under the Acropolis, 6,000 mm. seats. So, but theater is theater. Something that, you know, some it's things in that... move you or not? Yeah, and in some of the things that I've, I've seen and whatnot, um, I think, say, New York is brutal because the total honesty in the theater community, they're going to tell you. You know, they're going to tell you, but, but you know already, I need to hear that. that. I mean, directors, especially writers, they love to have this feedback, and they want to know what's not working, you know? And the directors yeah. want to know what's not working so we can make it better the next time around, you know? Right. I mean, I know like a theater, a certain theater in California, they kept using the same people over and over again because it was nepotism. And finally, people were just getting tired because nobody had the decency to say, you know what? You gotta stop casting your family and start casting the community because people are getting tired. No, but it went on for years. Nobody said anything. Yeah. They finally, when it did happen, it, you know, the whole thing shifted, and now they they bought a new space. And oh yeah. It they took got them, some but new it talent, took, opened but it took doors. them years. You know, I'm not gonna say the group's name, but don't. No, of course yeah. not. <laughs> but it took them years to to finally, you know, just come out with the truth. Because I think people get scared. They don't want to hurt people, you yeah. know. But it's by not, not about hurting. Yeah. People. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, no. And it's like you said, when, when I was hitting the stages, I've read some reviews. But there's sometimes people who write it, uh, you, they got to be careful, too, because sometimes they write it in a purpose to hurt somebody. Right. There's, there are some critics who really relish in writing a good, scathing review. Putting, you know, putting yeah. together a review that's really going to slice and dice it. And that's if, not what I'm Yeah, and then some people from the community, um, uh, if they don't like a certain person personally, yeah, they can. will do certain stuff, too. So that's, that's not helpful. So that's really... S but see, that's when an artist comes in. You've got to show that in your art some, someday. Look what, look what people do to hurt each other, you know? Okay. Even in the art field, you know? It wasn't... There was back in the day... To write a review was a science. Now everybody wants to be a star. Mm. Oh yeah, that that's that's their platform. That's their like people who used to like Walter Cronkite. who said, "After I go, there's nobody going to be serious. They all want to be stars." Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so. that's true, and that doesn't that doesn't help. You no. matter what, but does reveal it though where yeah. our mindset is right now. Yeah. So it's we're entering a really awkward place in our history, but. You know, we still got a lot of good, so there's well, always hope. We still know. have a lot of good, but it's like, what was the what was the joke about Donald Trump that he's the equivalent of the Facebook comic sense, comment sense section? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, well, there's so many jokes about him. Yeah, yeah so I, I can't figure figure that one out. But this is a prime example. This is a prime example of I. I uh, I do believe that we can grow and learn and heal communities and lives through art. Yes, um, yes. But then we have, at, sort of at war with art right now, we have something that could be really beautiful, the democratization of, of news and opinion. You know, uh -huh. we all have platforms everywhere. We have Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and Periscope. We can all broadcast our voices. Right. Um, right. So, so many people are doing this that it's like we're grabbing onto, here's who I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow Taylor Swift. I'm going to follow Kim Kardashian. I'm going right. to follow Donald Trump. 
Right. You know, and um, yeah. we we need to. I I have confidence in our society that we're going to scale things back a little bit, and we're right. going to be able to eventually say. Well, no, but really, now yeah. we have a world to run. Well, you know, when something new happens, it's a gluttony of, you know, and then we've had the fill, and then we sort of settle down, you know. So I don't think we've peaked yet. <laughs> you know, I think it's more, more to no, come. We're... But as long as, as long as people, you know, they can, they can write their little tweets and whatnot, but they've got to put a face to that. Put your face. In other words, somewhere down the line, you're not going to tweet anymore. You're going to talk to me personally. Yeah. You know, we've lost that sense of connection. Well, yeah, there are a lot of people the who physical tweet connection. and they don't have they don't have the connection with the people next to them, but they have maybe they don't care so much about that opinion because they're reaching a much broader audience, right. but eventually it does need to come down to actually being present in the room and that now you're talking about Kuma Kua's next show but yeah. it's making oh, really yeah, big yeah, right, right, hashtag right. I am bad at this it yeah because really after a while I mean, it's, it's just going to be words 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 and then I don't care because I don't I don't see your face who you're gonna I don't care see about. how you say it to me it doesn't matter <laughs> so we just have a couple minutes left I'd like to talk about if we could really briefly since this uh, Pelicans is a Neo-absurdist. Yeah, show. strong language. So people got to know that too. Yeah, very strong language. Um, <laughs> can't say some of the lines on the air, but yeah, we can't say a lot of the. I had to be very careful when I wrote the commercial. What yeah. could actually go into it? Because remember, we were, you know, when you, you you have a date, when you say like, okay, script has to be, all lines have to be memorized, so you can call for lines. So people go like line and, <laughs> and the line. line. Is a <laughs> <laughs> the lines are all words we can't say now. Yeah. Well, and yeah, you switch a lot between, and you have a lot of dog. Yeah. Yo. Listen, yeah, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, word. You know. Um, uh, and you know what? I, th I thought about this the other night. It's really a long poem. It's, it's, a, long, it's a poem. It's a oh, long poem. That's an interesting. How it's how it's written. Yeah. You know how it, everything goes fast and then slows down. And, you know, and all the characters are. Archetypal, you know, ar archetypes and stuff. Like they, that. they are, but you guys are all approaching them from a very honest standpoint. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. You're, you're not. These are not caricatures. You are right. not making fun of these people at all. Oh no, 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 no. You no. know, I interviewed Eric Yokomori, and he said um, he notices characters, and he will write notes about the characters, and he writes a play when he has enough characters. Oh, and then he just puts them in together and sees how they. You know, he connect. came to see it the other night, and then uh, he was. Very happy. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad Zuri's showing our um, our website there. Uh, lest we forget to mention, the show opens tomorrow night. Pelicans runs through April 24th. We would love to see everyone come to Kumukuwa Theater. I guarantee this is a show like no other you are going to see anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. All there is to it, and directed by the amazing Tori Kinoshita. Um, we'll think. Thank you very much for being here. Oh, thank you. I, uh, it was nice about time, time I had you on, huh? Yeah. It's nice chatting with you, great, as always. Great, great, great. <laughs> I would also like to thank you for being here. Um, there's a few more people here I'd like to thank. Um, Rich Prepus, who's our floor manager right over there. Thank you, Rich. I'd also like to thank Zuri Bender, who is in my ear, our studio overlord. And Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. We will see you next week here on Center Stage. Bye.